Thanks, Derek. Thanks, John. Thanks, Ira. Appreciate you having me. Um, and thanks, Susanna. That was an incredibly insightful talk and, and really exciting stuff that, you know, makes me feel like maybe I'm, maybe we're thinking the right way here. So this is our humble attempt at trying to, to find a way to make physician compensation make a little bit more sense and, uh, and try to find some of that physician hospital alignment. So, um, and it's been really large, largely in part to the relationship that we've developed with with avant-garde and being able to have that data that's been so, so helpful to, to really dig in. Um, so 18 months ago, a little bit, maybe a little bit more than that at this point, I, um, I started at Cambridge Health Alliance and, um, and realized there was some, some work to be done, which is, you know, part of the fun of starting a new opportunity and job and, and uh, part of what I was looking for. Um, but I realized we were in the, the highest 10% for OR supply costs with a uh, median length of stay that was twice, uh, or a length of stay that was twice the median. And um, we had a three month backlog of orthopedic visits and um, no existing solution to benchmark data and uh, limited tech and, uh, and assistance, tech assistance and communication and um, really a, a group of generalists, but everybody had an interest and a passion for a certain thing, but but nobody had cultivated that. So it was really kind of a neat, neat thing to walk into. and. And I saw a lot of opportunity. Um, so we initiated this partnership with Avantgarde and uh, we thought about a bunch of different ways to improve, um, both using the data and using just a different approach to things. Um, a lot of what you know you highlighted, Susanna, in, um, in the storm word there, I think there's, there's so much that, that tracks with that. Um, for me, I, I've always seen technology as a growing potential solution and something that excites me. Um, and the, the technology with avant-garde really enhanced our ability to understand data in a, in a very useful way. I could see a lot of opportunity with it. We recognized quickly that there was a huge opportunity in all our supply costs, you know, over 5 million over the course of four years. And, and the same thing, you know, very good opportunity with length of stay. So thinking about how to, how am I going to get my team of surgeons that I barely know to buy in, to use this data in a way that's meaningful and actually change what they do. You know, they've been doing the same thing for years and, um, and it, you know, it's, it's not an easy lift when people are kind of set in their ways, as we all know. Um, I questioned the group sort of as to what their, their frustrations were, what their, what was most satisfying about their work, what, and what motivates them to change. And one of the things like in, like in storm, that comes up is, is money and reimbursement as a motivating factor. And I thought, well, maybe we could do something with this data that aligns with the institution and aligns with the group that would affect how they're compensated. So maybe that's one way to change a little bit of what we do. And we've, I've implemented some other ways too that I'll touch on, but, but this is focusing on that, that bit about how do I use what we learned to, to improve the compensation. So we created a game chair. And, you know, I really had a, an incredible amount of support and, and thought put into this from the from Derek and his his great group at, at Avant-Garde. Thought a bit about, you know, how can we change the relationship these, you know, our physician employees have where they really kind of have been and are just cogs in a wheel that, that you know, contribute to the system to where they're central figures again. And even as an employee, you know, they, they have agency and the ability to gain from thoughtful decisions because that's always what drives me to feel committed and, and really, you know, part of the place that I work. So thought a lot about how to do it right. Created this expectation waterfall. You know, right now we're at the 90th percentile for, for cost. We're way up there, you know, in, in, the, in the bad way. You know, so we're, we're at some of the highest costs with regard to our supply costs. How am I going to get us down to the median? Because I think that's a safe place to, to sort of have be your benchmark and creating an annual stepwise progression there and then proposing and, and having it accepted that we can do a 50-50 split between the department and the institution. So, you know, the institution gains and the department gains. And then, you know, creating an equal benefit to everyone in the group and then, so everyone's working together. So even if someone's sort of the big, you know, the big fish with costs, we can sort of collectively motivate that person to make some changes because we're all going to benefit from those changes that they make. And then create this median that becomes the, the floor. 
So if we can continue to improve past the median, we'll continue to see a benefit. So it's ongoing. It's not a race to the bottom like some of the BPCI work that, that I've been involved with before. And then, you know, have the system absorb the cost of avant-garde because they're continuing to benefit considerably from where things started. And, you know, the thought with that is that using technology like this can really start to, to transform and, and drive change in care delivery and, and creates a foundation for what I believe, you know, is a different approach to, to ultimately risk, but, but really sort of cost awareness and, and thinking about the way that the, the surgeons are, are making decisions in the OR and about length of stay. Which that's a you know it's a very interesting to see how things change relatively quickly once once there is some motivation you know that fits in that. So this four year plan that we talked about um, and focusing on the highest volume procedures, the highest cost procedures, using national benchmarks to to reference to, and then getting network approval from our our C suite, which was actually you know it was an easier conversation than than I had thought it might be because there was really clear benefit to both parties. And, and, you know, they're looking for opportunities to drive change and change the way people are thinking, and they could see how this would work. And now it's expanding across all of our surgical services. So I have a you know role of, as well as the, the president of our surgical executive committee, and, and we're, we're using it now in general surgery, and we're expanding to, to OB, and they're really embracing this thought process as well. And then Updating the PA comp structure, that's sort of the next part of the step. So the, the MD PA comp structure, both the MDs and the PAs will, will see this benefit in the compensation. Continuing that with quarterly reviews with the entire group to say, this is where we are. This is what our, this is what our goal was. We're exceeding the goal or we're, we're at, you know, we need to do better. And then paying that out in the gain share, as I described. And then my hope and my intention, and I can, I can see it already starting to happen, is that this shift the way that all of our providers are thinking about and accounting for costs. So it, it's a totally different relationship. Up until now, it doesn't matter what anything costs. You just use what you want to use. Um, and then, you know, my overall hope with this is that we create, and these are some of the other aspects of what we're doing, but, you know, really developing this highly reliable, standardized care delivery system. So wherever we can, you know, and, and this was another aspect of things that I think is a really interesting topic that I could talk about for hours. But when we standardize care and, and we, we create consistency wherever we can, it actually makes our job so much easier and it drives costs down. So it's another, another big opportunity for, you know, for innovation and using technology wherever we can and seeking out that technology is something that I really enjoy. And like the relationship we've created with Avant Garde can be extremely beneficial to, to the whole of healthcare delivery. The gain share, as we discussed, and then understanding and knowing how to, to grow and strategize growth, you know, and using, using everybody at the top of their license, you know, and facilitating that, that work environment really is so much more gratifying for the group. And, you know, the, the way I like to joke about this is we're creating this multi-specialty, you know, alliance that is focused on exceptional patient experience and cost mitigation and ultimately can really be a foundation for taking risks. Cause if you can create an environment where the providers are motivated to create the best possible outcome and experience, just as Codman, you know, had envisioned for every single patient and then understand cost, then there is no better group of people to take on risk. And that's the way that we take on this, you know, to make a Star Wars analogy, insurance empire. So that's what I have to say. Thank you all so much. And thanks for listening. Thank you, Hans. Appreciate it. Now we'll uh, pass it to, to Porter. 